throw a gazillion reflective particles into the stratosphere and less sunlight will reach the planet, temperatures will stop rising. When you arrive, you see this tear of light. I've been observing these tears of light since I was quite young. Uh, I wake up most mornings and photograph them as gaps between two curtains. Um, when I travel, I always observe these lines of light before I even uh, gain consciousness in the morning. As you walk around the corner, you'll hear my voice reading to you a poem called Darkness by Lord Byron, which was written in 1816 during what was known as the year without summer. Volcanic ash covered part of the stratosphere. Sun didn't get through to the planet for a year because of very large scale eruption of a volcano in Indonesia in April 1815. As you emerge from the Red Tunnel, you will enter into a second space in which a sky filmed um, where I spend a lot of time and where I grew up in Sussex has been torn and striated. And you'll hear my voice reading passages from various commentators, scientists, explaining how uh, solar geoengineering, copying really that phenomenon of particles suspended in the air to dim the sun might affect a cooling of the planet. When I read about this, I wanted an audience or a viewer just to feel in their gut what I felt when I read those words, that this might be a way to solve the climate crisis, but no more blue sky. How do you feel? I had a dream, which was not all a dream. The bright sun was extinguished, and the sky... I asked myself and my studio team around me, were there examples where our species had in a uh, substantial way changed their mind about something and changed their behavior and shifted their perspective. We came back with a series of 73 moments over the last 73 millennia where we felt the human species had in a significant way changed its mind. I mean, there's the major ones like we used to think in our guts because we felt it in our feet that the earth was flat. And then somebody sat in a room somewhere, figured it out and said, no, actually, it's spherical and it took us a long time, but now, although we still feel in our guts and our feet that we're walking on a flat earth, most of us know that that's not the case. The other one, of course, is the abolition of slavery, that we used to genuinely think that the color of a person's skin could subordinate them. Of course, we know that isn't entirely solved. There are still plenty of places around the world where that very tragically still holds true but as a, a general observation, there have been improvements in our perspective. So we were picking out moments like that, and then we made a map of them, and we located them in specific places, and that consoled us, it consoled me, um, that we had as a species shifted our perspective in the past, and that we can again. Manless, lifeless, a lump of death. I was trained to help stories be told. How do you help visually get that story across? And I've always been, I guess on the hunt for common denominators, for overlaps of my kind of evolving areas of interest. It's a gift really, because it means I'm constantly growing, constantly researching, constantly finding words for things I didn't think I needed to say. I think if a work is carefully observed, I think if you've bothered to carefully observe anything um, and try and find something that you feel is a tr a, some kind of truth or some kind of you know, solid observation, that, that does generally cut through. So it sounds like, um, it sounds a little bit vague, but yeah, I think observation, anything that is clearly observed of the extraordinary, you know, number of phenomena that you could choose to observe, if you just observe one, just carefully observe one and communicate it, then it probably will cut through. She was the universe.